Everyone is familiar with the Lotus 108, the original Olympic conquering carbon fiber superbike. But what if we told you there was another? A bike brand that history has forgotten, but yet is equally revolutionary. With Tour de France prologue victories and Olympic medals. This is a hotter. And naturally, we're gonna race it against a modern day superbike to find out how fast it is and tell you everything about it. But we also have a third bike today as well. The first ever hotter, but built up with modern day components. Like a, a, a retro modern hotter. Previously on GCN, we have ridden the Lotus 110, Stephen Roche's Battalion, Le Mans Bellato, Ulrich's Walser, and a giant MCR. And in doing so, compared their performance to modern bikes, and not one has been able to beat a new road bike. However, we can't talk about super fast UCI illegal carbon monocoque superbikes without also talking about this, the hotter. Yeah, and if you like seeing us ride amazing retro bikes like this in videos and you'd like to see more, then well, if you haven't already, please do subscribe as it helps improve what we do and get us access well, just to, to more antiques like this. And it's fair to call it an antique because it's, it's 30 years old. 30 year old antique, what does that make us? No, maybe don't answer that one. Also, make sure you give the video a big thumbs up as well if you like this bike and oh my word, I do. I mean, this looks like it's been beamed back from the future. Imagine what it was like in 1993 when every other bike was a skinny steel bike. It's crazy, isn't it's it? It's just outrageous. For my money, this is even sexier than a Lotus. Yeah? Hotter than a Lotus. Oh, well, well, let's see how it rides. You you often ride it. Okay. And then I'll, uh, I'll tell the viewers more about it while you're riding it through the power of editing. <laughs> We've taken a break from the usual GCN Theatre of Dreams test track, the iconic road from Acton Turdville to Luckington in the Cotswolds here in England. We've had enough, frankly, of its brutal, unforgiving weather and have come further south to leafy Devon, a green oasis of a county whose roads are chocked full of tractors, livestock and caravans. Perfect for a full gas time trial effort on an antique. Let's hope the brakes work. You created this route on Strava. Am I right in thinking you're sending it up and down a 20% gradient? Don't worry about that. It's Devon. It's, it's just ten a penny round here. What you do need to be worried about, though, is uh, is the cows. The cows? A lot of cows in this part of the world. Yeah. Anyway, beeps. Beep. 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 Oh. Oh! I was warned that these forks and this uh, spinnergy front wheel are quite flexy in combination. Okay, we're trucking quite nicely at 40k an hour. I'll tell you that. Whoa. I'm going to descend on the drops. Holy moly. In this crosswind. The Hotter was originally devised in 1992, and with its carbon monocoque frame design, it was completely cutting edge. And the original bike featured a Lotus 108-esque mono stay design. But this is uh, the production model, which came out in 1993, and to make it more commercially viable, it features dual stays on the rear and dual stay carbon fork as well. And the frame is actually in three pieces that then come together from a mold. Then it was the creation of a chap called Simon Ask, who was working for a composites company called Carbon Infinity that was making camera bodies of all things at the time. As a keen cyclist, Simon decided that he wanted to use this revolutionary composite material to make a bike and, well, so he did. And uh, the result is this. This dual stay design with its aerodynamic carbon bladed fork started to rack up 
race win after race win. First on the domestic uh, national time trial scene here in the UK, and then being used by the legends Graham O'Bree and Chris Boardman. Initially though, it wasn't the whole frame that was being used. It was Hotter's revolutionary lightweight aero carbon fiber bladed fork, because these could be more easily fitted to sponsor correct bikes. So Lance Armstrong's Motorola team ordered a load of them to use on their time trial bikes. And so did the Festina team. And Chris Boardman even actually used the hotter fork on his ultimate hour record, Lotus 108. And the frame? Well, the 1997 and 1998 Tour de France Prologue time trials were won by Chris Boardman on the hotter frame. Although you'll be forgiven for not remembering that because it was badged up as something else. And well, after that, the now infamous UCI Lugano Charter banned this and every other exciting looking bike from being used in pro racing. And so consigned the hotter to engineering labors of love to the history books. This position is absolutely extreme. So old school. My hip flexors are killing me. Oh, oh my word. That was exhilarating and terrifying in equal measures. Perhaps erring towards terrifying. Not only is this like a priceless antique of a bike, but also that flex from the front wheel and the front forks and the gusty wind. <laughs> oh my word. You ready, mate? Yeah. You got your hands warm enough? No. Beep, 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 beep. Oh. Start. I can't clip in. There we go. Right, let's do it. Big ring, come on. Drop your chain. Back on. So, as per the other time trial bikes and bikes of this era we've ridden, blow my neck. These geometry is just so low at the front. It's really aggressive, nothing like modern bikes have, you know, sort of scaffolding at the front end to raise you up, and it's hard. Oh, it feels sketchy, that. Bloody hell. Oh, oh, God. Got a bit of a speed wobble then. The, uh, the front end, noticeably flexy. Might be the fork, but also this spinnergy wheel there, quite flexy. Get on the bars for this corner. This bike, oh, God. It's definitely not. DI2, this old Campag. Yeah, that's for sure. Oh, 19 mil tires. You feel every bump. I've always wanted to ride one of these. I've just seen them on TV and stuff and thought, oh, they look so cool, but I don't think I look as cool as Chris Boardman right now. Ah, oh, struggling. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. Oh, I was, I was scared. Uh, uh, there's a few bits where I got loads of oscillation through the front wheel, like a big speed wobble coming through our front wheel. Okay. And I was just crapping my pants. Oh, oh God. So what is our modern day superbike then? Well, it is Ollie's Alperson de Kerning Team Edition Canyon Air Road CFR, a thing of absolute beauty and so, so different to the hotter. I mean, there's all the modern tech, of course, like disc brakes, the fact that the tubeless tires are 10 millimeters wider than the ones on the hotter. But then what's fascinating is the frame. Now, of course, this complies by the UCI rules, those that banned the hotter back in the late 90s. But the hotter wasn't designed with aerodynamics in mind. It was designed primarily to be light and also 
so that they could make it using the skills and the materials they had at the time. And so that's why you've got that huge monocoque section, whereas here, it's completely different. But also with this bike, you've got the added advantage of countless hours of computational fluid dynamics to refine the aerodynamics of it. And it's given rise to completely new shapes, all these hard edges that are completely absent on the hotter. I'm genuinely fascinated to know whether this frame design is still faster than that old one. Yeah, Ollie's not come to uh, officially set me off, which is, uh, well, frankly, a bit rude. Maybe he doesn't want to see me riding his lovely new bike. <laughs> right, are we ready? Beep, 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 beep. Oh my God, it feels so weird getting back onto a modern bike after that. Almost like you're kind of darting all over the road. I literally can't ride this, having been on the other one. That's so weird. Incredible how quickly you get used to a bike and then forget about it again. You know, it's also weird, right? This being Ollie's bike, the position actually feels with his turned in levers, like it's a TT bike anyway. Like chalk and cheese, those two bikes. It's the point where actually getting out of the saddle on this to start with, I felt like I had the same kind of control issues, but for the other reason, because it's so stiff, in comparison, I was darting all over the road. All right, mate. Beat me. I will, yeah. You enjoy that. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> right, I immediately feel comfortable and in control and very fast. And I'm higher up at the front end, which counterintuitively, although that might make you think it's slower, can actually make you faster by allowing you to get this more aerodynamic position with bent elbows. The difference in tire width is huge as well. Running 30 mil wide boys on uh, my canyon, which just makes the ride so much more comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Right then, so this is it, crunch time, okay? We've got the original frame, literally the original frame, modern wheels, modern tires, modern gears, modern position. Genuinely, this is gonna be fascinating. Right, you ready? Beep, 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 beep. Oh my God, this, it's, I mean, it's obviously a completely different bike, but it is literally, a completely different bike. Like the front end is completely different. So confidence inspiring compared to that other one. Like a rocket ship. Whoa, did you hear that? Bang! I can't tell you how stiff this bike is out of the saddle. Like, This bottom bracket is effectively just dangling from the beam, but it doesn't budge an inch or a millimetre. Right then, it's crunch time. Ollie, hit us with some results. Well, I mean, I was riding quite a bit slower than you, taking it easy today. Those are your gloves. Yeah. And um, your hat. <laughs> so I. Um, rode at an average pace of around 31k an hour, sort of 200 watts. I was 21 seconds quicker on the canyon. Were you? Mm. Now that is uncanny. So yeah, I was, I was putting out a bit more power today and I was averaging about 42k an hour. I also was 20 seconds faster on the canyon, but I was then another 20 seconds faster 
on this one. So does it prove that the hotter frame, the band design is faster than a Canyon Air Road? I mean, people might think it's nuts that that was, that was quicker than the modern bike, considering that is 30 years old, but it's not 30 years old, is it? Because the group set on there, the wheels, that cockpit in particular, you know, getting your hands in that high position, you big, it's got a wax chain on it. It's got a wax chain, yeah. I mean, it's big, you know, it, it shows you that position is always king yeah. uh, uh, over, a, over a frame. Um, so basically what we can say then is that we can't conclude either way whether the frame is faster, but it's clearly not rubbish. Yeah, but I, I mean, one of the things is in the old style, and what's nice about showing it in this new style is in the old style, with the front end being so low, I was really struggling on it. Yeah. Like to hold that position. And then also with the super, I mean, that's got wide tires in, but the super narrow tires on that rough road surface, super slow. Yeah. Like I'm bouncing around all over the place. Yeah. I mean, this one is night and day better than that one in terms of front end stiffness. Yeah. Like it was, it's, I'm blown away actually by how good this frame is 30 years on. It's good, isn't it? There's not many bikes that are 30 years old that are this fast. Well, I can think of one, right? If you could only have one of these bikes, either this or a Lotus 110, what are you having? It's a tricky one, that, isn't it? Yeah. I think, hand on heart, yeah. that this is a better bike than the Lotus 110. I think this is a better bike to ride. And what I love about it is the fact that it used to have drop handlebars on. Like this was a bike used in road races. But yeah. I'm not fussed about time trialing. I would have this frame set and stick drop handlebars on and I would be the king of the calf ride. <laughs> right, I love it. Well, let us know which one you'd pick. Lotus 110 or a hotter in the comments section. And well, we, we hope you've enjoyed this vid. And if wow. you have- Are you staying on the fence? Up. Yeah. Oh! Really? I don't want to sway the viewers. All right. I do. Hotter.